Muskegon Channel. I'm Andy O'Reilly. Dave Cackley is over yonder. He's laughing. He's We're having fun today because it's a Wednesday. Yeah. It is April 11th. Everybody's up and at him. We're all excited. Oh, Dave is still fighting a cold, I'm assuming. I am. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I got two things fighting. I got the, uh, the Tylenol cold medicine that I took last night. Yeah. And I got the five-hour energy just yeah. kind of like duking it out to see right. who's winning. Yeah, and so I'm just you're... enjoying the fight, man. I'm sure you are. <laughs> I'm enjoying the fight. I feel okay. It's like He's it's like the cold's out. there. Yeah. It's there, but I just I don't care. Okay. Well, I don't care. I'm good. I was uh, I I did my reading program last night at the jail, which was oh very uh, nice, very nice. Um, what else did I do yesterday? Oh, I was supposed to do the uh, career day yesterday. Oh, why? What happened with that? Well, uh, somewhere along the line, and it's weird because the the lady that organized it said she didn't get my reply. However, mm-hmm. um, it was in my calendar, so that means I, I must have replied, and I don't know, and, and who knows, you know, for whatever reason. Um, they didn't have a slot for me, so I got there, and they're like, oh, we didn't get your reply, so we didn't book you in, and go home. <laughs> okay. All right. I was bummed. I like those career days. I think they're fun. I think it's fun to, to get kids and, you know, kind of spark their imagination a little bit and tell them your story and... You know what I mean? It's 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 just the it's it's a it's an educational opportunity outside of the box for young people to right. actually see what goes into doing something instead of here's your book, read this, uh-huh. answer these questions, blah blah blah. And, and it's something I've done for a long, long time. And uh, I it it sucks when what do you do? You know? Yeah, I get that. I I don't know that I would be comfortable doing it now. I I used to substitute teach. I did right. that for like a year, but that's different. Basically, you're a professional attendance taker, and right. then you know they got to do whatever assignment. And then you just sit back and play with your phone. Right. Um. But yeah, I don't. Man, I don't know if I'd want to do a career day in front of a bunch of kids. I, I don't. Like it. I and think it's, it's not because I don't. I I don't dislike kids. I mean, I yeah. have a kid, so it would be a little hypocritical of me to say I don't like kids. But I, yeah, I really don't like kids. Yeah. I guess maybe that's what I'm saying. It was, uh, yeah, it was a bummer, but, you know, we'll do it again next year, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, Well, that was my day. Well, it seemed productive. You got to, you know, keep some inmates to read, and uh, you didn't have to deal with kids. Yeah. You've got got some health issues, so let's get you taken care of and back under wraps, under Uh your your cushy blankets and 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 your your vapor rub. You put a little on your feet, do you? Does that help? What? You put the vapor rub on your feet? No, I've never done that. Oh, yeah. I don't do the Vicks Vapo Rub. I don't like the smell of it. I don't like no. the medicinal smell. No. Okay. No, I got the I've got the the Flonase uh, nasal spray. That's oh, okay. uh, that's good stuff. I may be developing an addiction. We're not sure. Oh, well. we'll see. You know, if, if I, I use nose, please, any or... of that nasal spray crap, one spray, I'm hooked on it for a month. Yeah. I don't touch it. Wow. Well, I may need to. Uh, I may need one of your twelve steps if uh, <laughs> if this keeps up. We'll see. My old man, I, on the other hand, my dad, yeah, he gets a Christmas card every year from Afrin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dad, you ever going to lay off that stuff? Well, I kind of need it from my nose, you know. There's a little Afrin there. <laughs> oh, jeez, that's funny. Roll some news here, Slick. Uh, let's do it. President Trump is considering joint military action with Great Britain and France and Syria. This comes amid numerous reports of chemical weapons attacks. In that country, Syrian President Assad is reportedly gassing his own people. I mean, this, I think we can take the considering off. He's already tweeted out uh, because Russia's threatening to shoot down anything coming into Syria. He said, hey, we're, you know, we're, we're coming. And it's like, dude, if you're going to do it, I'm fine with him doing it. I think it's probably a good idea. Just don't announce it. This is the same thing you were criticizing Obama for years ago. If you're going to attack Syria, if you're going to, if you're going to drop bombs on somebody or you're going to use military, don't announce it. Okay, so don't announce it the hell are you doing dude i'm gonna tell you what all the Ugh. all the all the argument aside and and everything else the, the guy's just not that stable he he really is not he he i don't know it, it's just the 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 overall temperament of the world the world right now is is just at at jitters level because he's unstable you can't i think he reflects the world honestly I don't. I, I think he's I, a perfect I, I think that I think that there are a group of leaders in the world that dictate our our world um, boiling point. You know what I mean? I think it, it, mm-hmm. it dictates our 
our our tone. It dictates our our compassion. It dictates our 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 dialogue. It, mm-hmm. it, since you know what, since the guy got elected, look at the way people even just talk to each other in the United States. There's no longer discussion, discord. There's no longer any room for argument. It's all polarized either way. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying either side's right and wrong. I'm right. simply saying that there is no room left at all for any kind of civil discussion. It's all either my way, the highway, screw you and your your wrong You're way of thinking. Right. And Jesus H, dude, it is it is just unbearable at this point because at at the very top, that's what we hear day in and day out. And I somehow think that, it's okay. And it, this is it's where, really not. There's there's no I, middle ground left at all. I get what you're saying. I think he's the result of that, though. I don't believe he's the cause of that. Oh. I believe we had this going on. We had this already going on. And what came from that con- conflict? Donald Trump. Oh. He was the, he was the e- this equals Trump. This is what the result of that was. For better or worse, that's what the result of it was. And, you know, I like I said, it doesn't impact me. I, you know, I, there's there's a part of me that just kind of gets off on the chaos of this. Ugh, um, you'd like things to be stable. You 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 wish he stayed off Twitter. You wish he, you know, maybe was a little more, uh, what's the word, statesman like at times. Eloquent. But I don't. You know, he can be eloquent when he's on a prompter, just like Obama could. But it's it's yeah. He the, he's a, he's the id presidency. It's like. N- Filter list, just and there are some people who who really like that, and I understand the appeal mm-hmm. of it. I don't think it's necessarily good in a president most of the time. Occasionally doing that is one thing, right. but when you're constantly doing that, and then on the other side, when you got the constant, and I've said this before, I think people the the outrage machine is in full force, so everything he does is outrageous, even when it's not. Um, but yeah, it's it's in situations when you're dealing with with something like uh, an international conflict that's going to involve Great Britain, it's going to involve France. You wish she kind of pulled back. Okay, you don't need to trash talk Russia right now. Right. You don't need to trash talk. So it's not necessary. Right. But that's who he is. That's who was elected. So you just kind of throw up your hand. Crazy. I don't know. What else to go? Oh, according to a recent study, states with medical marijuana programs have fewer overdose deaths from opioids compared to other states. Now, the Journal of Health Economics found that those states see fewer prescriptions written for opioids. Of course, medical marijuana was approved in Michigan in 2008. It's going to be on the ballot for recreational use without question. Well, uh, this year, it and might, you saw the other news that the Republicans which, are thinking about legalizing it before it gets on the ballot because they want to keep people away from the polls this fall that's seriously that is being right. bounced around that's, the that's house that, you know what honestly that's, that's a pretty smart political move well it's a but, pretty smart because it's a because it's a it, it's it's this is this is when and this is historically it yeah. doesn't matter who's who's in power the opposite party usually takes over a bunch of seats in the midterms that always happens but so think about this yeah. politically yeah okay smart move mm-hmm. smart but move. at the end of the day if you ask me it's kind of devious because these people put all this work into it to go out and get the signatures go out and get the thing taken care of get out and do the in in i'm gonna i'm gonna come right out and, and just talk about this because it really bothered me a week or so ago i was watching the news okay. on tv8 And they had some lawyer on. They were talking. Because remember, they went through and they had that big dispensary shut down all over the state. Right. Yeah, that was a big yes. They had to shut down a couple hundred of these dispensaries and blah, blah, blah. And then in the report, they were talking to some lawyer from Grand Rapids about these these new medical dispensaries that are going to open up and and Mm -hmm. yada, yada, yada. And the guy comes out and says, you know, realistically, you're going to need two hundred and fifty thousand to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars to open one of these medical dispensaries, and that's what's going to have to be. And the reporter said, "So the average guy in the street's not going to be able to be able to get into this business, right?" You know what? That sucks because if you're able to grow plants and you're able to provide this medicine and you're able to take care of these these people that you why shouldn't you be able to generate a job for yourself by by getting into this business at the ground level and and growing yourself up out of out of being a a, a street dealer? 
Why should you be restricted because you don't have two hundred and fifty grand or seven hundred and fifty grand to get started in a business yeah. which is nothing more really than planting seeds and growing them properly? And I totally agree. That I think it's ridiculous. It's anti-capitalist is really what it is. No, well, no, it, it, it's not only that, yeah. but it's also class division because you're taking right. away somebody's ability right. to change their life by starting a business, growing a business, and and sustaining themselves. It's all, you know, it's pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps that or sucks. weed straps. I mean, you're going to have to have $750,000 to get yeah, into this stu- business. That's stupid. That's you're, ridiculous. You're absolutely and I right. thought it sucked. You're right. You know what? I'm I, not all for giving marijuana to kids. I don't think anybody should right. be driving around on marijuana. I don't think any of this, you know, you know what? Treat it like alcohol. But to yeah. cu- to these people that can, that can really do well growing plants and know what they're doing and things like that. Mm-hmm. To cut them out of the middle of it, just like that, is absolutely ridiculous, and it's wrong. Yeah, I think you're. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. It really right. pissed me it's, off watching that news story the other night. It, it's yeah, it's stupid. It, yeah. it it doesn't. It like I said to me, it's anti-capital. I mean, if if you're a fan of America, you're a fan of capitalism. You're a fan of of people making something of themselves. I mean, you can. Everybody's got their issues with with weed and what they feel. Yep. Okay, fine. But yeah, to to, to your point. You know, to to say oh only these people can do it, that's garbage. Yeah, that's garbage. No question. But Thank you. yeah, I, I would say getting it legalizing it now would be a for Republicans would just be a brilliantly a brilliant political move because you're gonna have a lot of people coming to the polls just because of the marijuana legalization. Right. I see. The, the, I mean, you finally have a a bunch of these you know baked pothead people who just who that's what they've been bitching about and talking about that's been literally like their only conversations for decades right is marijuana legalization and i mean they're 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 coming they're voting and you but but on the other but on the other side of the coin too you're telling them to sit home and be complacent here's your free weed oh they're gonna be complacent anyway no but but at least they come out and vote you know and doesn't matter yeah it does no it does get out and vote I would, I would hope that, but they're not required to. And, no, and if you but. can, if you can, if you can legalize this and and, and think to yourself, well, that's uh, people we don't have to, we don't have to worry We're about. We're Republicans, and we want to it. enable you to sit home and do nothing. So here's that your doesn't enable. No, home. they they can choose, they can choose to sit home or not sit home. That's right. on the voter. That's not on the re- Republican or the Democrat. I, How I, whatever your strategy just, is, yeah, I'm cool with that. It stinks. It's, Leave it's, it on dude, the ballot. It's, let them get out and vote for it. It's part of the – or just legalize it so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, but, but, I'm telling you, yeah. that's what I would do. Anyway. If I were advising Republicans, that's what I'd be like, get this thing on the ba- – get this – don't have this on the ballot. Write it in to legalize it now, and you won't have to worry about your seat because that's what these guys are worried about. They're worried I about know. their seat. But it, that's what everybody's worried about. You should be doing the right thing in the first place. You won't have to worry about your seat. Okay, but if they do it, it's still the right thing, though. Would you agree? You and I would both agree that legalizing this is the right thing to do. Probably, right? yes. No, no, probably. We both agree. Yep. So do it. Do it, and then you don't have to worry about losing your seat. But it's not, Is it, it a little dirty? Yeah, but a, a the job, game. Dude, this is not that kind of job. You should not be worried about your seat, losing your seat, because you did the right thing already. You know what I mean? You should, if, if you're a good representative, and I don't know if I'm going to be one or not. I, I hope I'll be a good one. But the at the end of the day, when it let's say if I do get elected and if I do make it through two years and I do come up mm-hmm. for reelection, I don't want trickery to be the thing that would get me reelected. You know what I mean? Okay. I, I don't want to rely on that. I want to rely on my merit, my skill, and and uh-huh. what I've earned to get reelected. Not some group of guys behind a closed door going, "All right, all right, let's go do this." Woo! We just saved our jobs. That's that's stupid. That's not what the, that's not what a, a a representative or senator's job's about it's about doing the right thing for the people that you represent you can argue the ethics i'm not saying you're necessarily wrong you can argue whether it's right or wrong to do it you can't say it's stupid it's actually the smart thing to do it's you you can i understand your ethical qualm and that's one of the reasons i'd vote for you right if i were in muskegon because i because i know you're not full of it i know you're (laughs) You're completely honest. You're you're being completely transparent. But I also see why they would do it. All right. What's your next? Story? Because I would tell them to do it that way. <laughs> cool.
course you would. Finally, the Youth Activism Coalition held an event at the Walker Community Center in North Muskegon on Tuesday, calling on lawmakers to answer questions on gun safety. We kind of uh, uh, talked about this a little yesterday. Uh, some of the questions posed. Now, the first one I, I think is fine. What are you doing to keep me and my friends safe in our schools? That's sure. reasonable. Very good. Second one. Do you believe schools should be turned into fortresses or do you believe the solution is fewer military style weapons? Now we've talked about this. I've said, you know, everything should be on the table, but this question is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The idea that an armed security person or giving the opportunity to some teachers to become basically de facto security officers, that that makes this a somehow a military fortress is stupid. It doesn't. It fortifies what you and I have talked about, soft targets. That's one option. Is getting rid of military-style weapons an option, too? Yes. But it's not one or the other. It doesn't mean you can't just completely say, and I get their kids, and this is why we don't let kids vote. Okay. Because there's nuance in this. And Like, you know what? I, I, I got my buddy Kurt, and we did a mm -hmm. story on the Muskegon Channel. It comes down to layered security. It right. comes down to, and, and you know what? Fortifying the schools, it's it's time. It really yeah. is. We need we need nobody gets access in unless they're buzzed in. Period. Uh, we need somebody on scene that can ha handle the problem right then and there, mm -hmm. and and we need layered security at the schools. Period. Yeah. Yep. That's what. Once it comes again, down to. first step. Seriously, I I I don't know that I can publicly do it. I'm so close to endorsing you. Yeah. Well, gee, thanks. Just because of these last two discussions we had. Well, just because of these last two discussions. It's just, it's, it's ridiculously, it's just the ridiculously reasonable way to look at both of those. And that, and, 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 and you know, we're not turning the news into the campaign platform or anything no. like that. But all no, I'm not at all. For in the whole friggin' thing is just some reasonable discussion. Can't we just right. get away from the polarization? Can't we just get yeah. away from the, the, you know, the ultra right and the ultra left and all this other yes. kind of stuff? The reasonable people all have to come together, and the middle needs to get louder. The middle needs to yeah. simply say, look, everybody on the fringes, all the screaming in the world is getting us nowhere, mm -hmm. period. Let's get together and be grown-ups about this and talk about right. what's practical and what's real and what can honestly be done about what's facing us in today's day and age. And and getting in, into your point, going back to the, the opioid marijuana thing, the opioid crisis is killing people killing people that's what pe more people are dying from that far more than than school shootings not that it doesn't mean you can't address both problems but but the opioid thing doesn't get the clicks it doesn't get the clicks people and don't want to believe it exactly people don't want to people don't no. want to simply say oh we've created this a little problem here by yeah. over prescribing this stuff right and now it's spilled over into injectables and now it's mm -hmm. done <clears throat> it's it, it, it's there was like forty thousand people that died of opiates last year, right? Forty thousand people. It, it insanity, and it doesn't have to happen. It doesn't have to happen. And if you need them, okay, right? I, that's fine. Uh, yeah, but, we're not talking about a ban on opiates. No, no. <sighs> it's just yeah. Why can't people be more reasonable like we are? I know. I mean, and this is. I mean, this is one of the few times we, you know, mostly have agreed on everything. Yeah, here. we're doing all right, so. man. All right. Sports. Cubs lose. Cubs lose. Cubs lose. They follow the Pirates eight to five. Tigers lose again by a run. Ooh. How many two to one and one to nothing games are the Tigers going to lose? It. They're just good enough to lose. That is going to be their slide. Just good enough. Come watch us lose by one run. I think That's you're going to see when things start warming up, up, they'll get better. I think right now. Yeah the way they're playing it's like can we just get out of the ice box <laughs> can we please just get back to the hot tub that's all we no want no kidding <laughs> at sports have yourself a great wednesday see ya